All right, guys, so this lab, we're going to be comparing um, the lab vault thermocouple. So this guy is already pre-made, and it's already got the uh, connector on the end here. So we're going to compare this bad boy right here, so a pre-made thermocouple, uh, to one that we can make uh, out in the field. So this is just thermocouple extension wire. Uh, what type of extension wire? Well, we can take a look at uh, the color coding here. I don't know if you can miss, just make out the color coding. So this is a, a red and a yellow. So this guy right here is a type K thermocouple. So you can tell by the, the color coding, um, or you can tell if uh, your buddy has uh, actually put type K on the spool of thermocouple extension wire there. But oftentimes, the the for some reason, the name, I don't know if you can just make this out here, let's see. You can't see the name. For so for some reason, there is no type K labeled on there. So we're seeing the, that it's a type K by the yellow and the red conductors there. So what we're going to do is I'll quickly show you how you can create that thermocouple extension wire. Um, I'll already have it done because it takes a little bit of time. Um, and the extension wire is quite uh, expensive. So I'll already have it set up so that when you walk into the lab, this will be set up for you, obviously, and then we'll have these guys for you. But let me show you quickly how to create that thermocouple extension wire. Okay, so let's get these guys out of the way. So I've cut a similar length uh, piece of thermocouple extension wire there. Uh, you know, a decent length so that we can create uh, a cold junction on one side, a hot junction on the other side, and then be able to dip it into our hot or cold ice bath. Uh, so first thing we need to do is we're going to take uh, an X-Acto knife. And I've tried to like score the outside and that wasn't working for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, hopefully without gouging myself on camera here, I'm going to slice between the two conductors here. Because this thermoplastic is kind of a pain to... Uh, to get off. So I need a decent amount here, and hopefully I'm not scoring the actual uh, conductors. So let's see. Okay, there's the red, and we're taking a good close look to see that I haven't nicked the, uh, the conductor there. Looks good. And the yellow, yeah, looks good. Okay, beautiful. So similar to your, you know, slicing the, the center of your Romex, you're just gently going between the conductors, and then we're good to go. Now we got two connections that we can make use of. Now all I'm gonna do is just strip the ends here. I'm gonna have a decent amount stripped off here because I'm gonna loop them around. I'm gonna eventually put them onto the calibrator. So one thing I'm trying not to do is, um, is to press too hard when I'm stripping it because I don't want to um, create a nick there, which is gonna create a weak point that would break over time. Okay, then I'm going to take the yellow conductor and then strip off a decent amount there. Beautiful. Okay, and uh, and then all I'm going to do is just take this bad boy and just loop it around. Sweet. So now we've got our coal junction right there. So now we're able to connect into the calibrator. Now we need to create the hot junction. So on the other end, I need a decent amount again uh, taken off. So what I'm going to do is again score between the conductors here. Again, hopefully not slicing my fingers open on camera. Okay, this one, it doesn't really matter whether I score the outside insulation of the conductor uh, because I'm going to make a joint with those guys. So now I'm going to take my strippers. I'm going to strip back, again, a decent amount here. Again, trying not to overly score that portion there and create a weak point. Okay, beautiful. And now, see this part is open, that's our cold junction. Our hot junction is where the two conductors, so these, again, these are two dissimilar metals. So I'm just going to manually loop them, then I'm gonna take my pliers and twist them around, just a touch, and then take that guy off. Beautiful, get everything out of the way. Gorgeous, and now I've got a makeshift thermocouple uh, that will work quite well, actually. We'll see, hopefully in the lab, that it is uh, it is fairly similar in accuracy to the, yeah, let's see if I can put these two guys together. Um, fairly similar in accuracy to the one that's already made up from, uh, from LabVault. 
Cool. So now you know how I've created the, the thermocouple and how you can create a thermocouple easily if you're stuck and you don't have a thermocouple in the truck, but you do have some extension wire, you can easily create your own thermocouple just by stripping the, the ends, putting these this end together to create your hot junction, and then two connections to go into your microcontroller. Okay, let's uh, move on with the lab.